What's up, everybody? This is Carrick from ACG, and it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews at the speed of embargo that aren't two minutes long and aren't complete bullshit. Today is the platforming third-person shooter open-world game known as ReCore for the Xbox One and PC. And of course, this game is out Tuesday, the 13th. Now, ReCore tells the tale of Jewel, a maintenance worker slash robot controller on a far-off planet, preparing the surface and terraforming it for the inevitable arrival of incoming colonists. Think less Jonestown snacking on one another and more Mad Max meets Fuse meets the world's thinnest library of a aggressively weaponized Pokemon, and you sort of get the idea. So let's see if ReCore is Mario with Guns, a stellar leaping, lunging, and lasering backed-up gameplay package that sacrifices nothing in its goal to deliver fun, or if it's just one more title that tried to bite off more than it could chew, a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for ReCore. Please love me robotic animals, safety robots with missile launchers, and GTA Online map moments. Graphics are up first. Yeah, so this is just all over the place. While the excellent use of the blasted out color spectrum that you would expect in a game that's exploring a world that's one part Mad Max and one part ancient robotic factory, and the character designs and the bot designs are also very good, ReCore has its issues in delivering it. First, while graphically it's pretty good on PC and Xbox One, it does drop frames consistently, and with the Xbox One dropping below 30 many times, and, well, just facing a rock wall. Much of the issues are actually puzzling, and there's no real reason for them. Battling out with multicolored enemies, switching weapons to match their weakness is all enjoyable and looks great, with massive explosions, excellent use of color, and particle effects to differentiate characters at times. This is also all brought down by moments of severe stutter and frame hits that just do not seem justified with four to five enemies on screen. Also, just looking at it, it really feels like there's a bug with the textures going on. See, unlike games like Uncharted and others that lead you by the color-coded hand from leapable spot to leapable spot, lending the question, who put all the friggin' chalk right out before Nathan showed up? ReCore is surprisingly and professionally devoid of all that, and it does add a feeling, a little feeling at least, of additional flexibility there. But the only issue here is that when trying to see the difference between shadow and light, and if you can possibly jump somewhere, you're faced with some of the most extraordinarily poor rock textures we have in a current-gen game. Ah, uh, just remember that time you ate Play-Doh in kindergarten to impress that one shy girl? But imagine an entire world made of that, just half-digested balls of somewhat formed Play-Doh, while other items in the game world might be insanely sharp and clear in detail, and yet... Those are actually the same distance from you, and maybe even on the same plane. And it's not a lack of filtering. I've looked at that. It literally looks like last-gen textures got baked onto the disc with everything else. It's a sad state of affairs here, especially because most wouldn't call this game world busy or hyper-detailed anyway. Really, to me, as a package, there are times when there is just this almost mystical mayhem that's going on in ReCore that I absolutely love. And I would say it hits about 50% of the time and misses 50% of the time. And those times it doesn't, it feels like it's just not ready for prime time and that the underlying engine can't spit out the graphical rhymes that the MCs are programming into it. Really, this probably needed to bake a little while longer. Sound, music, and voice. up and running. Let's head outside and take a look. I've been trying to scavenge parts to repair my leg, but we haven't been able to lower the big core bots close to our crawler. I can't move fast enough to hunt him down. And Seth? He's too scared to go out on his own. And of course, sound is up first. It's pretty good. While the separation was excellent, there was a fairly good differentiation of frequency layers at times, especially in some of the dungeon levels and when you're all fighting. I found that the expected effects were also weaker than normal, and the giant room made of steel ended up sounding a little bit like it was recorded in a padded cell, with barely any effects actually occurring. Now, that being said, the various little bleeps and boops from the cores, your robotic friends, uh, the way they make it and deliver it are actually sort of cool, and each one has a bit of a voice, or at least a little bit of an emotional resonance there. Weapons sound pretty good, but even with some of the small adjustments to your weapon as you move forward, it still becomes samey, and it doesn't really have near the level of customization as the robots do, so that can sort of make your ears a bit tired as you're getting in longer and longer battles as the game progresses. Music. This is ultimately very, very forgettable. First, there's just very little within the game. You get some in the load screens, and you get the occasional moment where there is some, but the game is surprisingly bare and really relishes in its negative space, and I think it's actually slightly hurt for that. In fact, 
other than the occasional loading level snippet and some prominent points in completely bare bones areas. What plays out is more of a moody sideways accompaniment than something memorable in a game or certainly something I could listen to outside of it, which is sad because I do know they did some work on this soundtrack. It just doesn't come through in the actual title itself for the most part. Very, very average music. Voice. The voice actor for Jewel does a fairly good job, especially as she learns more and more about what went wrong on her mission, and those characters that you end up meeting or hear an audio log spread around the world like the universe's craziest Easter egg hunt don't really bring down the package. I wouldn't say anything here is something to write home about, but certainly none of the voices make me go, oh my god, I hope he or she stops talking. And that, of course, brings us to gameplay. So as I said, you play Jewel, who's woken up from her icicle sleepy time, and it's told that her shift has started as a maintenance worker for the massive job that entails getting a new planet called Eden ready for human civilization. Soon Jewel finds out that she may just actually be alone, and the sentient robots that were there to do the work might have gone batshit crazy. And by soon, I mean she is literally told right at the starting. So you're launched out into the desert, starting to uncover what could have possibly happened. You're instantly teamed up with Mac, a robotic dog-shaped creature that, as far as I can tell, really serves no other purpose than to headbutt enemies, dig in the sand, and maybe tug a couple heartstrings. In fact, I'm not actually sure what they would be doing had the terraforming worked, but I guess that doesn't really matter. He's a cool character, and Jewel can order him to do things like dig for items in the sand, attack enemies, and a couple other things. Later as you progress, you get more and more, five or six, and after a bit, you suddenly ask yourself, what in the hell was everybody planning for? if this hadn't gone wrong because it's like outfitting a fucking Roomba with an RPG oh it's there to clean all right but if the couch gets in the way boom now, to further the story and power different things in the game world, Jewel needs to collect items for salvage and also collect cores. They're basically like prisms from knickknack stores in the 1980s DMs tried to pretend were jewels during middle school D&D games. There's also colored ones that can be used to raise the level of your mechanized pals, while prismatic ones open doors and move you through the story. Everything is based on color and recore, almost everything at least. If an enemy's red, they're weak to red lasers, and you have a core in your gun for that, starting out with just one color and then moving from there. It's not super detailed, but it does keep you a bit preoccupied as you're flitting between three flying red robobots only to take out a massive monkey-like creature of a different color and then bounce between them during combat while also tag teaming in your robotic sidekicks to see who can do more van damage. That's actually very fun stuff. And then of course while in combat all the bots can do some kind of useful thing like shooting missiles into enemies faceplates uh, or some other damage causing attack and some of them also help you get through the game world. But I think that's where there's some basic problems with ReCore. Because what games like Mario and True other 3D platformers do to succeed is to elevate that feeling of exploration across the environment where New sections aren't just remakes of those prior finish levels retreaded for new abilities, but also offer new and challenging rewards, places to see, what have you. And that doesn't always feel like it's here in ReCore. In fact, many times it just feels forced. There's just countless times where the entire game world is set up almost hilariously cliched to the point where all you want to know about the story is who in the hell set up these three ring speed barriers behind a stuttering force field, but also made sure there was one place where my particular spider bot could help me get through it. Now, while this happens in other games, in ReCore, it's just really on the nose, making it hard to feel like there is much within the game world other than these metal Rubik's Cube gravity-defying disasters waiting to happen as you flit from walkway to walkway a thousand feet in the air. It doesn't feel like you're exploring after a few hours. Instead, it just feels a bit blah. It feels like a rat in a cage. For me, a game has to have a reason things are done, a cohesiveness within its fiction to make the game world at least make sense within its own space. Even if it's a plumber and a princess, that wonkiness does really well to make you know that you might be riding a bullet across a level one moment and then smashing a massive man-eating plant seconds later. In ReCore, it sometimes feels like it doesn't even know where it wants to go. Luckily, ReCore's controls are really well done for the most part. While shooting enemies, you can also speed dodge, and when fighting a half dozen tyrannical half spider things for your particular staked out location in the sand, the ability to sidestep with your jetpack assisted foot thrusters is actually the difference between moving on and a loading screen that makes you wonder if the game crashed because it takes forever, but I'll, I'll cover that in a second. Now, while jumping around at times, as I said, with the rock textures can be a little bit questionable, for the most part, I did like a lot of the platforming sections. Now, as you're adventuring, you're also occasionally going back to your home base, where you're able to research blueprints for new robotic parts you have found, as well as a basic crafting system. You can also raise the level of your robotic allies, using items you take off the dead, raising their attack, defense, and energy use. The graphical variation was actually just okay for these changes, sometimes being nothing more than a color swap, other times actually changing the overall look of a robot's parts, like its legs or head or backpack. Now, much has been made of the recore ability in the game. This is, of course, your ability to latch onto enemies, cores, and suck them out Mortal Kombat style 
style using a wicked ass Batman like harpoon. Once you do so, you're basically in any fishing game you've ever played, applying tension to the line until it turns red and then letting off and then doing it again until you gore the innards out of your target. While doing all this, you're obviously vulnerable to other enemies, so it's best to plan accordingly. And that added a good deal of strategy to the fight. Do I send Mac to smash face first into the enemy while I sort of pull the glow in the dark heart out of his comrade after whittling him down a little bit? Or do I just concentrate on the largest guy as he can kill me with just two hits? That was actually very fun, and I really did enjoy a lot of that strategy. And of course, speaking of fun, brings me to Fun Factor. It is fun for a while, but it's got a lot of technical problems. While I have been hearing that people are getting loading times on death of two solid minutes, I did not. But I did get a couple in the 45 to 50 second range, which is really insane. That's just too damn long. And that's after the patch. It just breaks you out of the fiction. Now, I enjoyed the gameplay for a time. I would have loved to really explore the world, and while I feel like they tried to have an open world game, it's just nowhere near the size that the ability to grind in the title would actually have you believe would be fun after a certain amount of time. I mean, you can sit on top of a robotic spider nest all day long if you want, but it doesn't seem like it would actually be that fun after a bit. I think the real problem is Recore can't seem to figure out what it is, a shooter, a platformer, or an open world adventure game. I remember that one time I got the bright idea to improve Kit Kats, and I said, you know what? Skittles taste good shit. So I smashed some in there. It tasted like crap. And the only thing that was good that came out of the entire thing was the name, which was Skittle Scat. Recore does the same thing, and the combination of different gameplay styles just doesn't mesh as well as I think it should. While each arguably seems to take the stage for a while as the leader in the so-called pack, in the end it lacks focus, there's a reuse of gameplay mechanics, some technical issues, and that backtracking that happens at some particular times is a little bit insane. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is wait for a rent or a deep, deep sale. Now, one of the reasons that is, is it's also not a very long game, you know, anywhere from five to eight hours, depending on how you play it. But additionally, with the technical issues and all of the other problems, I just don't feel comfortable telling people that they should go and get it, especially because I also didn't find it incredibly fun. So that's it for me. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Make sure to check out the patron. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Always follow me on Twitter. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week. Don't worry, you're safe with us. Right, Mike? <laughs>